research or personal experimentation. So you use this time to uh, ask questions and uh, follow up if needed. Now, what we do, the Kimberly will start overviewing other programs, and then we focus. I will focus specifically on the curriculum resources that are available for you. I think this will be informal presentation. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation. And then we also will leave some time at the end. With this, I'm uh, happy to uh, hand the microphone to Kimberly, uh, and she will uh, take it over. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining. I would love to share with you a bit more about what Arkady and I spend our, our days on and trying to put together some programs and activities and services that make sense for IT faculty or faculty who are teaching some sort of class around um, technology, ideally with Microsoft technologies. So there are an awful lot of programs that you may have heard of and some of them you may not have heard of. I will take a few moments um, today to share with you some of the ones that I think are most relevant to you, assuming that you guys are all IT faculty. And then we're going to focus a little bit more strongly on the Faculty Connection website, as well as the curriculum resources that you'll find on that website. And so think of the Faculty Connection site as your portal into Microsoft to access the various programs, resources, news, and events that are available um, for you. So let me start by telling you a little bit about DreamSpark. DreamSpark is a program that gives you access to software. Some of you may be very familiar with MSDN Academic Alliance that has been renamed to be DreamSpark. As part of the DreamSpark program, there are various subscription models. There is a model where there's a limited amount of software, but still professional software that's available completely for free to students and to students directly. So if your institution does not have a subscription with us, students are still able to get software for free by going to this website. There is also an institutional model, which is the MSDNAA program that, again, has been renamed. And there's two different programs. There's one that includes a limited amount of software, and there's one that includes um, a, a more robust collection of software. There's two different fee structures. Both of them are more about have, helping us to recover the cost of delivering the downloads to you and certainly are just a nominal fee. Um, Kimberly, one second. seems there's a problem. Um, there's an issue that some are saying they cannot hear you. Um, yeah, I believe there's a couple of people who do not have access to voice. When I'm looking at the, the session, there's three where the phone is not highlighted. Um, and I would recommend that if their computer microphone is not working, they may want to sign in on the telephone. Um, can you write down to them these instructions, yeah. please? Yes. Um, perhaps, Ruba, perhaps you could send an instant message directly to the few people whose phone is not highlighted and, and maybe try and help them connect. Or I can as well. Okay. You, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Drift Park, Park um, I think I finished a bit on DreamSpark, but you'll find our most, um, all of our professional software that's relevant for developers is usually here about a week after it's released to the public. 
We also make available the beta software as well as links to any consumer previews that we have. So you'll see a Windows 8 preview link um, from this site as well. And you also have access to the Express tools. So think of DreamSpark as the place you go to find our software and to get most of that software for free. Microsoft IT Academy is another program that Microsoft offers to help institutions teach Microsoft technologies. The courses that are available here is different than the curriculum which we host on the Faculty Connection site. The IT Academy curriculum is very much about teaching how to use Microsoft technologies in order to achieve a certification that's recognized internationally. There is a subscription fee for an institution to belong. But once you belong, you have access to all the curriculum you could possibly use, and as many students can access it, as well as teachers at your institution. It's a very popular program worldwide, and there's more than 9,000 IT academies worldwide that are using this service. And if you are not familiar with it, I do encourage you to take a look as Again, it does help you provide your students with those international certifications before they graduate. It's really a great time for them to get that type of training that they need to complement the coursework that you may be delivering. So once students have the software and they've got some training, um, the next step is to think about Imagine Cup. Imagine Cup is a worldwide competition, sort of the Olympics of, for IT. In this case, the Imagine Cup, we have local finals um, and local competitions as well as online competitions. Students compete, again, locally as well as those projects that are really great move on to compete on a worldwide basis. There's lots of benefits in joining the Imagine Cup and recommending your students to join the Imagine Cup. One is we do encourage students to work as part of a team to develop their applications. We always like to have a mentor be a part of those teams. And as a uh, faculty person, you are an ideal mentor. Also, business professionals in the communities make good mentors as well. And it gives the students an opportunity to work together to identify the right team to create an application. And in this case, typically the applications are those that are socially good, are those that help to solve the Millennium Goals, or they really can be anything that, is, that a student can demonstrate in using Microsoft technologies. So it's a, a, a great platform to use to give your students experience using Microsoft technologies and experience developing and creating something that they then have to demonstrate to others and others being judges and people around the world. This year's Imagine Cup will take place in Sydney and those students who have um, risen above and developed something really wonderful will join us in July with 400 teams actually 400 students, which is about 100 teams from various countries, will travel um, as, a, as a reward, will travel to Sydney with their mentors, and will compete again in the last round to determine who's going to be the official Imagine Cup winner for the year. Many of those teams go on to start businesses. Many of them are able to use that experience to help them get a job. Um, and certainly all of them have had just a, a, an experience that is um, – very, very unique in the industry. So some of those projects are really worth sharing. Some of the projects are going to be IP that you protect, and some of those projects that will go off um, and become a, a business. But the projects that you might want to make open source and you may want to share with others or have others working with you on a project, there's a site called CodePlex. Um, it's not limited to the Imagine Cup, but it is one of the, the ne nice next steps after the Imagine Cup that I recommend. But for any project that students may be developing in your classrooms or you may be developing, this is a, a great platform for helping you to share those projects and to have a place where you can store it and look back and see how the project has progressed over time.
I don't know how many of you have heard or have a Microsoft student partner at your university, but there are more than almost 4,000 Microsoft student partners worldwide. These are students that have excelled in technology, are very enthusiastic about technology, and are really able to demonstrate, to learn, and to demonstrate the newest technologies, especially from Microsoft. If you have one on your campus, they're great students to tap into and have them um, talk in your class or have them share with you some of the newest technologies that Microsoft has been sharing with them. These students, um, the only way we find out about these students is usually through faculty. So if you do happen to know someone, a young person that you think has um, the ability to excel and to be enthusiastic around technologies, we would be very happy to um, entertain them as a, the next student partner for your university. Every year there is a call for new student partners. Um, it tends to happen at the beginning of the school year and also in the middle of the school year. If you go to that website, you have the opportunity to um, recommend somebody, um, or students can also apply directly. Uh, Kimberly, can I, can I just uh, stop you for a second? I see an error on my side and says this slide cannot be converted for presentation. I'm just wondering if other people, is anyone not seeing slides? Everyone can see the presentation? Okay, people see. Okay, it's probably my side. Sorry. No worries. It's always good to make sure we're all on the same same track. Thank you. So those are just a few of the programs that I wanted to highlight that I thought might be interesting to you, and you may not have already heard of them. But I would like to spend a few minutes telling you a bit more about the Faculty Connection site itself. So this is a portal that Microsoft has developed in order for faculty to find, again, the programs that are relevant for them, as well as the curriculum, both curriculum that Microsoft develops, either Microsoft Research develops, Microsoft may uh, request somebody to help us develop, or faculty contribute curriculum that is around either Microsoft technologies or around various topics that are associated, like operating systems, agile software development, um, and Arkady will go into a bit more detail on some other um, areas of, of curriculum that you will find. We have about 150,000 faculty from all over the world that are registered here. It's a great place for you to see what other faculty are doing. On the site itself, you, can, you will find resources which we recommend or we suggest that are either very popular that others are using quite frequently in their classrooms or might be some of the newest technologies that we have um, come up with like a connect for windows for example is some of the newer things that um, is now on on the website you also find on this site not just the, the programs and activities that Microsoft is running, but you also find some other software tools. You'll certainly find curriculum resources. You'll find some um, labs and quizzes and various resources that will help you in class. Some of the curriculum is just ready to go. You can use it as is, but I know most faculty don't use it as is and like to change it and modify it and reorder it and sometimes just use a piece of it for one particular class or a series of classes. So it is completely customizable. You're welcome to go there. It's free to download any of the content. Um, you can use it and change it as you'd like. We would love if you were to um, modify it and make it better or if you localize it into your into Arabic, um, if you would then contribute that back so that others could take advantage of it. That is um, really the most ideal for us, is to create a, a really great community. Coming next month, I hope you guys will visit the site um, again with us as we have some new features that we'll be releasing, including the ability to not only rate the curriculum that's there, but also to have comments on it and to share how you're using that, that content so that others may be able to 
um, to learn from your experiences. I'm going to pause for a second and see if you have any questions on um, the Faculty Connection site that I may be able to answer. I would love to do a demo, but I'm not, um, I'm not feeling confident with links today to think that I can share my desktop well enough. And it seems like not everybody here is online in a perfect way. So I will skip that for now. Um, I will point out with my little pointer here, there is a section here on the front of the website, which is where you'll find the suggested resources. There is a, one of the, the first tabs here, which I've highlighted, is faculty resources. Here you will also find a link to resource kits, a link to articles, which are um, more timely information that we would like to share with you. Some of them you'll find in this, um, on the home page, on the front page, are things that are um, new for us that we think is, is valuable. But there's a whole section um, where you'll find a bunch of articles. In that section, you'll also find faculty experiences. So there are case studies of how other faculty are using different pieces of curriculum. So I would encourage you to visit those two spots. There's also a collection of videos that you can use in your classrooms, um, or you can, of course, look at online. For those can you really? Yes. Um, excuse me, I have uh, something to say about the uh, Faculty Connection Program. It was uh, one of the, uh, the programs uh, or the initiatives uh, we launched in the Academic Support Center for Palestine and uh, Jordan, and uh, most of our guests today or the audience are from uh, Palestine and Jordan, so it would be good uh, if we can uh, hear something from uh, one of uh, them is sitting what uh, did they how, how did they benefit from this program by the end of this session if you if you allow us I would love to hear that mm -hmm, good um, something else uh, hello I saw my son Zinati is um, a, prof a faculty member from uh, Gaza uh, they reserved a whole lab uh, for um, a big number of uh, faculties there in uh, Gaza and I just would like to say hello for him and uh, his colleagues uh, sharing us uh, this session for the first time. Hello, Isam, again. Please go ahead, Kimberly. Okay, thank you, and welcome, welcome to, to all of you. So for those of you who are not registered on the Faculty Connection, it's, it's relatively simple to register if you have a live ID, which is the unique identifier that Microsoft provides online. Um, when you go to register, it will ask you for that. If you don't have that, it will ask you to create a live ID first. Once you've created that live ID, it, it, the process is quite simple. It just asks you a few questions, mainly your email address and the country that you come from and some of your interest areas. And it will also give you an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter. It does require um, each individual to register on their own because of the, the need for the live ID. Um, but if you do, and you can register and download as much content as, as you would like. There is some content that is restricted for faculty who are verified as a true faculty member. The reason we ask you to verify is to ensure that we do not send to students um, test materials or answer results. So we do ask for you to get verified. Um, it's a relatively simple process of either showing a website or, or something that states your status at your university or college. Um, <laughs> and we will help you do that um, via email or fax. So do register. Also get verified if you can, um, but first do register. I'm going to skip the demo, but I am going to tell you about an, a new feature in searching. Um, when you are searching, and there's a couple of ways to, to get to the ability to search, there's a tab that says search. There's also a search box right on the front page, and that gets you into our content repository. Once you are in the content repository or before you get there, there's an op option to use the visual search. 
The visual search is a Silverlight add-on, which allows you to look at the database um, by the various types of content to scan through to see the content that's been contributed from your country or by your language or in um, various topic areas or, again, the material type of content. After you search through that, it allows you to see the type of content that's there, whether it's a zip file, a document, a PowerPoint, a video. And you can zoom in and zoom out and, and look at um, various collections in a, a very visual way. One of the, the nice parts about that is you can look inside of that content, inside of a zip file or inside of a PowerPoint presentation, and really look at each individual slide even and see if you want to download it. And then, you, of course, if it is something you would like, um, you can very easily click through and download that material. So I do want to encourage all of you to utilize the, the platform. There is a, a tab at the top right-hand side for feedback to contact us with any suggestions or recommendations you have on the site, how we can make it better. When you register, there is an option to register for our newsletter. Our newsletter is delivered in French, in Arabic, or English. Depending on your country, you may get one or you may get two um, in different languages. It's every month. It usually comes out the third week of the month, so some of you may have just received a newsletter. It typically highlights different news items as well as new curriculum that you may find available. Um, as well as um, different events that may be happening in your region. So take a look at that. We, again, appreciate your feedback. We do accept contributions if you have something that um, we can share with others. And now might be a really good time if those of you who have used the site want to share some of the, the benefits or maybe a nice piece of content or something that you may have found or an improvement that you might suggest. So I noticed someone's having trouble with the, the slide presentation. Um, I think sometimes when there's n network issues, you may lose the slide, um, and typically it comes back. I don't know, Arcady, if you got your slide back or not. Yes, it depends on the bandwidth, I guess. Yeah, yeah um, my, I, I don't. I also have an error, and I don't know why. Everything uh, so is okay from your end. Uh, okay. I can't completely, right? Okay, so but yes, keep us updated. And then if people don't see, please let us know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, let's let's go ahead because uh, it's fine with others. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think at this time I'll, I'll hand it off to Arkady. And again, if anybody would like to um, think about some good content or you know value that they've had from using the Faculty Connection site or want to send an email after. These are you know, really nice things for us to hear and for others to, to learn about. Hello, good morning. Good, good evening again for people who join later. We are um, having a presentation about different faculty programs. And uh, I'm Arkady Retic. I'm from faculty group. And together with uh, Kimberly, we do an overview of the programs. As we mentioned, we will make slides available to you. The session also be recorded, so you will be able to look at this later. Now, I'm trying to, I cannot see the slides myself. And this is strange. Can I run through the slide deck for you, Arkady, and you just tell me which ones you want so I can share it? Okay, so I'm just trying, just a second, I'm trying to share. Uh, it should be okay now, this. yes. It should be okay now, Arkady. Okay. Yes. Should be okay? Yes, yes. Okay, so what do you see? Okay. Oracle right, Mercer's highlights. 
Fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so Kimberly, please uh, move the slides, and I will tell. Uh, I'm on slide 13, and it says curriculum resources for those who also don't see. And uh, this is what I will overview next, about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and obviously, if you have any question, please ask. If you have question afterwards, you can email Kimberly or myself, or definitely Rubar is one who manages the, the media center. So you definitely welcome to contact any of us. So uh, we're on slide 14, which is, uh, says faculty connection suggested resources. This is your place to come if you really need to do something, overview what's available, what does it highlight, this is your place. As Kimberly, about 3,000 different curriculum resources available. There are slides, exercise, presentations, labs, videos, all this available for you and you can search through this. We have visual search. However, Often you come and you're interested in a particular topic, and this is where we put for your convenience all the topics under the standard classification system. So if you go to faculty resources and you select resource center, you will have this page where I bring you the top suggested resources that we recommend you to use if this is your first time. And you can see they organize under this topic. So, uh, in addition, what you can see on the on your right hand on these slides, there are also additional uh, places where you can go and find information. There are also very interesting uh, academic publication called for papers, which uh, give you to use our academic search that come from Microsoft. But you can also look at, for example, on your right, uh, it's a link to resource center, a resource kit. So the slide 15 is actually show these resource kits. The resource kit, it's another way to look at what's available for you. And here, when we bring to you not just, not just the way to download resources and, and, and material, but also to use it online. So here, as you can see, we actually highlight the um, the top resources that are available to share with you. For example, something with uh, on phone development, on cloud computing. These are not only curriculum resources, but also training material, uh, software, and other resources that could be useful for you, not only for teaching, but also for just if you want to train yourself, if you want to understand what's available. So this is something where you can explore. And again, this is the more interactive way to do. There are limited amount of what's available here, but we try usually to bring the top resources for your use. And uh, what I do next, I actually overview, I'm going to slide 16, and in the remaining hour, hours, I will overview for those who already use material, though already familiar with faculty connection, I just highlight uh, probably four or five top resources that could be useful for you to use in your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, activities. So the slide 16 is about software engineering and the specific curriculum resource, a specific courseware that I wanted to spend a couple of mi minutes called Agile Software Engineering using Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. So this is a nice set of, uh, it's a full semester course developed by Microsoft together with a professor from Canada who teach this subject for several years. 
and uh, he shared uh, course uh, presentations, lab student projects, and source code of uh, any of the labs he used. There is also instructor supplement. As uh, Kimberly mentioned, this is limited for faculty only because it has uh, material or answers to questions. But also there is there is um, a book, a textbook that we negotiated. We actually asked the publisher, as it's a person, to give this book to faculty for, as an inspection. So it's free for you. It's a it's an ebook. It's a PDF copy of the book, so you can use to understand material. Now this is also uh, gives you some tutorial on the. Uh, Team Foundation Server, which is for team projects. So this one, really ideal if you want to do some uh, projects with students, or if you're interested, actually, those who to do a margin cap, software engineering, this is ideal tool to use. And this curriculum also has tutorial, an introduction to Visual Studio for those who are not familiar with Visual Studio. So this is really, really great resource. I would highly recommend for you to use it. And uh, obviously, let us know what you like and what you don't like. I'm going to next to slide 17, which is about operating system curriculum, and uh, which is something, a specific course. I think it's most of it's a core course in computer science where the student uh, need to learn about operating systems. This particular one, looking into teaching operating system using Windows. And it's provide you slides, exercise, labs, but it also provide you Windows kernel source code. And this is something that only available to faculty. Obviously, you can also give it to students, but we make it distribute from faculty. We also provide, as a resource kit, we provide also server, Windows server that is already configured with a kernel debugger, and it's used a virtual PC, virtual hard drive mounted on virtual PC, so you can actually teach it very easily and don't be, uh, and you can recompile sources because it's again in virtual mode. Now, this, since it's a really huge file and it's a lot of material, we provide it on a DVD. The DVD, if you're interested, let Ruba know or let me know, and we will email for your DVD. But remember, this is specifically for operating system classes. So if you're interested, this is our top material, and we will be really happy to let you use it. Uh, Kimberly mentioned the, the faculty experiences classes. If you go to Windows Academic uh, website, you will see there are some uh, universities in Egypt that pioneer the use of this technology in the class, and there's a very good uh, feedback on this particular curriculum. And, and uh, speaking of Windows, if you notice this, the previous one is still use Windows 7 because it's widely available and most of the teaching is really uh, go Windows 7. It could be also Windows 16. But there is a new operating system coming. You know, it's a Windows 8. And it will soon will be more material available. So uh, this slide, slide 18, is a preview for you actually introduced you to know, a technology called HTML5, which is widely used in Windows 8 together with JavaScript. This is one that allows a uh, dynamic uh, web-based presentation, but also allows you to use new uh, dynamic UI that Windows 8 introduces. This is a very popular curriculum. At this stage, this is not a full course. It's six modules that have presentation and documentation and, and uh, labs. Uh, and as, as other, it also has an instructor guide that gives you uh, answers to exercise and quizzes. So again, introduction to HTML5 can download everyone, but 
the instructor guide we only give for those who registered and verified as faculty. I'll stop for a second and see if there are any questions, any uh, comments, and, and, I, and again, we'll leave some time at the end if you're interested to hear some other information. I am going to slide number 18, and it's called Windows Phone Curriculum Resources. Uh, you probably aware of what's going on in the world with uh, smartphones, and obviously iPhone and Android phones are very popular. However, Windows and Microsoft are making available a new Windows 7 phone, and this is really unique. It's a different from iPhone. It's a different from Android. It has a different UI, it has different approach. So we highly recommend, if you're not familiar with this, take a look. From our point of view, we provide a lot of resources. If you look at this slide, those for you who can see, on the left side, I listed five curriculum resources that could be taught in class programming with phone. It could be game development with phone web development with phone, you can uh, do UI design, and you can also uh, use Windows Phone and connect to Cloud Azure. We provide all free APIs for that. So these are huge, all the resources, because there are many of them. We also created a Windows resource kit. And if you look at the middle of this slide, it says, uh, and also, uh, you remember I also your online resource kit. This is one is also available online. So in this resource kit, you have curriculum material. You have all software and tools that you need to use to develop applications. And remember, students can submit applications for free. You don't need to pay anything fees to Microsoft. And you have a good chance to earn some money if your application is, uh, is uh, successful. In addition, this uh, resource kit provides you training materials, but we also bring some uh, projects that are already implemented and used by uh, faculty and students. And again, there is a DVD available for this. And I believe uh, Amir has a lot of DVDs, and if they don't, let them or us know, and we will be more than happy to email it, to send it to you by mail. And we'll be happy also to hear your feedback. If you feel that something is missing, if you feel the material, uh, you want to contribute to material, or you want to tell us some uh, case study how you use in class, we'll be happy to publish this and bring these resources to our faculty connection. And I see some people really already use it and like it, so we are really happy to hear about this. My next slide is slide uh, 20. And uh, no surprise, it's about Connect. Connect for Windows curriculum resources. Uh, again, I assume that many of you, probably all of you, heard about Connect. This is amazing invention that introduced natural user interface and create new way of communicating with computers. This is very popular and very really hot technology. And it's not just about games and anything, and it's also about a lot of uh, computer graphics, a lot of uh, speech recognition, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So it's a lot of courses can be used. And this is why Microsoft introduced a Kinect for Windows, which is a, a different a little bit from Kinect from uh, Windows from uh, Xbox. Kinect for Windows can be directly connected to Windows, if Windows 7 or Windows 8. It has much better um, sensor and have uh, uh, the 40 centimeters uh, 
view. So you can use the recognition from 40 centimeters to 3 meters. So it's a perfect to put on a on your PC and use it in class or for personal experimentation. The curriculum we provide is actually really, really great, and it's developed by a professor from UK who, again, worked with us. He was given access to a test group. And by the way, many of you are interested. Uh, we have Microsoft Valuable Professional Programs that is uh, make it... Uh, possible for people to join different programs. Now, this particular uh, curriculum resources, uh, it's about, I think it's about, it's a, there are four full modules, or they also can be used as a workshops. They provide you slides, labs, demos, there are nine demos, and they accompanied by tutorials 57, almost 60 pages ebook. It's a PDF copy. I think I'd actually award the copy of the book. And this is self-contained. So you can really learn about this technology from there, but also it's ideal to use in class. Now, it does assume that you <coughs> have a working knowledge on C sharp and uh, some knowledge on XNA. And if you don't, we have uh, plenty of materials for you to learn from about these technologies. And both curriculum and the tutorial provides a link to where you can download these materials. I'm moving to the last piece of technology I wanted to emphasize today, and I also want to leave some time for questions. So another hot technology and one that we definitely provide a lot of material and support is uh, cloud technology. A Microsoft version of cloud called Azure. It's called Windows Azure, and it's both uh, Windows and SQL. We have a special web sub, web website called www.windowsazure.com slash education. On this slide, you can see we provide connection, and it's on the left of your uh, slide number, what is number of this slide, I think, I can see, I think it's 17, number, 17, no, 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 it's number, number 21, it's after Kinect, number 21, oh. and, okay, I think in the versions that I see, and it's called Window Azure in Education. So you see the website snapshot, and you can see the option for educators, students, researchers, or institute administrators, because we give you access through the website. You can apply for access for Windows Azure for five months. It's a semester-long course, and you can request access for yourself and students. This is really just came a couple of weeks ago, so this is really invite you to go and log in and request this access. And also, as you remember, we have an online resource kit, but we also have a DVD with a curriculum resources, the software tools, and other things that are available. Again, you can request it for, uh, and we'll be happy to supply these resources. Please let Ruba know, and we will make sure she has a lot of DVDs and resources to send to you. Well, uh, you, you can send me some as a backup, <laughs> if you like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, we will sort out. We'll definitely make sure you will have resources. But I will send you from us or from directly uh, through the MIA Center. Okay. Uh, slide 22, this is my last slide. And it's just for this, if you're wondering what kind of access we give to uh, our cloud computing, <coughs> it's uh, in this slide on your right side. It's also on the website. The most important is uh, the access again for faculty and student. The faculty one who need to register and request for five months. Student can get uh, themselves shorter, but faculty can get for whole class by registering. No credit card required. You don't need any credit card to get access. You will be given a pass. Okay. 
I hear some noises. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Somebody has an open mic. Um, okay, some, some kids are joining us. They're very excited to hear about the uh, Azure. So uh, what you can see, it's a quite a reasonable amount of compute, uh, cloud storage, and we also give you access to SQL Azure database. So uh, this is a really great resource if you're interested to use in class experiment. And as I mentioned, we have a curriculum a resources that show uh, use of this technology from overview to a web base. This is still not the biggest uh, uh, full cloud course available, but we probably will have towards the summer much more. So please stay tuned. Check back on this website. And remember, you have a faculty connection. This is your home. If you come faculty connection slash faculty on the front page, you always see what is new, what is hot. And Kimberly mentioned already, subscribe our newsletter. So this way, every month you will receive updates what's going on. And the last not least, I think you have a unique MIA center with very dedicated staff, Ruba, Amintas, and others who are, will make sure you provide. So please stay in touch. I'll stop here just to leave some time for questions. Uh, thank you, Arkady. Can, can, can I say something? It sure would be so. in Arabic uh, for my people. Let's sure. say. Um, it's, it's about uh, the newsletter. Uh, الكورب بيطلعوا نيوزلتر كل شهر موجود فيها كل الابديت اللي بدنا اياها واللينكس وال المواد التعليميه والتولز اللي بتلزمنا هي فور فري ما بدها ولا شيء بس بدكم تعملوا سبسكريبشن تسجيل فاللي حابب فعلا انه يعني توصلوا هاي النشره ال النيوزلتر الشهرية رجاء بس يبعت لي ايميله يبعت لي انه انا ربا بدي انا واحد من الناس اللي بس بدي انها توصل هاي النيوزلتر طوالي انتو بتصير الداتا تاعتكم عند الكور بتصيروا من الناس اللي بتوصلهم هاي النشرة سواء بتحبوا بالانجليزي او باللغة العربية بتوصلكم باللغة اللي انتو بت بتفضلوها فرجاء يعني مهمة كتير ومفيدة جدا واحنا يعني واجبنا انه نفيدكم بالطريقة اللي انتو بتشوفوها مناسبة بس انا بالنسبة لي بشوف واحدة من الطرق واللي بنقدر انه نفيدكم في فيها. ولو حتى عن بعد هي النيوزلتر اي حدا بده رجاء ان يخبرني واحنا جاهزين يعني وهي الكورب مثل ما اركد وكمبير اللي بيحكوا متعاونين جدا ف هلا بنفتح المجال للاسئله اللي عنده اي سؤال بليز يعني يا اما بكتبه يا اما بفوت معنا مداخله بال بالصوت ثانك يو اركد ان كمبير لي سي يور تايم ناو اي ثينك دي هاف سام كويشنز ليتس بروسيد Yes, please, uh, we welcome any questions or feedback for those who are already using. Please let us know. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Hello, yes, I, I can hear you. Yes, uh, um, I'm Samir Tartier. I work at University. That's in Jordan, Philadelphia, and the U.S. Um, excellent from both of you. Uh, a really eye-opening for for me. I didn't know many of the stuff. Uh, oh, so I'm sure I'll take the information I got back to my and probably uh, use and utilize the information. Um, there's some didn't uh, see you talk about, or even um, Kimberly, which is, uh, what about research collaboration? Um, I'm sure uh, you have, you know, there's Microsoft 3. Um, is there any collaboration? Yeah. Uh, what are the chances for uh, researchers here to uh, do something together with Microsoft on research? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Research collaboration is very welcome from anyone. This is a different group is dealing, it's Microsoft Research, and they have their own site. Uh, what we do since we are working together, we provide through newsletter uh, update on different uh, requests for proposal for different initiatives that our Microsoft Research is conducting. 
And I also assume that MIA uh, Center also will be providing some information about Microsoft Research. Our particular group, I myself and Kimberly, we more focus on education, and this is where uh, coming. But uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, there is uh, called www dot research dot microsoft dot com and it's called the, the a special group on research connections and again through newsletter or if you go to faculty connection you can select uh, one of the what's the called uh, on the top you can select um, uh, under the faculty programs there is a link to Microsoft research site and look at what's available. Does it answer your questions, Samir? Uh, I have one other question I forgot to ask him the first time. Uh, what what will be, uh, you know, if I um, contribute you um, with uh, current material, especially if it's in Arab, uh, process of it being included in Microsoft, the, the process is quite simple. From the front page, who owns it? This is Kimberly talking. There's a share your contents link, and you are able. If you are registered onto the faculty connection, you can share your content. It's shared under a Creative Commons license. You own the IP, but you agree for others to use it. Before it gets posted, we have somebody who is Arabic speaking who will review it just to make sure that it, all of the contents that you are describing are, are in it. And then we index it so that it can be found both in Arabic and in English. Yeah. And you own it. It's your, your copyright. You just give us per, and others permission to use in class. This is a condition. So if you look at, if you download any material, you will see the professor's name there, but we give, uh, the license gives the right to modify. So you can use whatever you want, you can modify, and then uh, put your name, but if you modify, you just need to say that it's modified. But yeah, it's your copyright, you just give a permission to everyone to use and modify it. This is the only condition. Yeah, I think the license... My question. Thank you both. Okay. Any more questions? And remember, you always can contact us by email, and you directly or you through Mia Center. I see some question coming from Hala. Uh, he's typing a message, so we'll wait. But otherwise, uh, please us, let us know your feedback. Anything you're interested in, any way you suggest collaborate, any interesting case studies, material, we are we're there for you. So please use this opportunity. And uh, thank you again for the, those who joined us. And uh, we look forward to continue working for you and uh, many other seminars. You also, please let us know any specific topic you're interested in. Or maybe some of you are interested to present and share your experience. I think this is all we are very interested in. Okay. Any other questions? I'm FBM. Uh, 
first students. Uh, Arkady, please. Okay, I think MSDN, MSDN now is a dream spark. You probably, yeah, if you join the presentation, those who join at the beginning, uh, Kimberly overview this under Dream Spark, and it's available for both faculty and student now as a new program, as a new in one place. Uh, um, this is Samir. How can this is Dream Spark? Yes, yeah, Samir, I can't hear you properly. You you're disappearing. You've been uh, cut. Your voice is coming in and disappears. But if you're asking about the uh, Dream Spark, it provide the the way MSDN Academic Alliance, yeah, was before. So think about this like Dream Spark. And Kimberly just typed the, here the, the specific name of this program. If you access Dream Park, just go to Bing and Dream Spark, or oh, it's dreamspark.com. Any changes uh, in the content of uh, MSDN AA so that uh, we call it Dream Spark Premium? Yeah, I think this is the main, the main change. They, they make, uh, there are two types of programs, just Dream Spark Standard and Dream Spark Premium. And Dream Spark Premium, it's very much MSDN Academic Alliance. that give access to mainly for computer science departments. Mm. and give you to most of what's available. The Mr. Spark standard is more limited for non-computer science departments. Uh -huh. And again, just go to dreamspark.com and it's really uh, outlines very clearly. There is a table that says exactly what you get on the program. Mm -hmm. There is also a rule of what you can do also to forward to people the previous emails because I think we overview MSD, uh, Dream Spark program and Microsoft Research program in our newsletters and it will be probably very useful for people just to look at them. Or you can actually maybe post it on, they actually post it on, I think, the faculty connection too. Who did? Uh, on faculty connection, you can go and look at the previous newsletters, but it's usually oh. only in English. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things you can do is maybe to forward to people on this call the previous newsletters. Sure, so. sure. And uh, I'm now con connecting with uh, Murray, Murray Dohan, so that he sent me the official mm -hmm. newsletter in English and in Arabic, so that I can send it, send them both together for. The, the audience uh, who just started sending me their requests. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, the invitation calls for Dream Spark, imperative for what? Faculty connection, yes. Yes, yes. Who's asking about faculty connection? Because uh, we launched this campaign, Palestine mm -hmm. and Jordan, three months yes. ago. Mm -hmm. So faculty connection invitation codes is for to make it, instead of you going and register and waiting to uh, be uh, verified as a faculty member, we can send you a registrator account because, for example, we know that you're already faculty. So you then can log in with this code and immediately have access to faculty-only material. Okay. Um, I, gotta, I think uh, as a faculty member, uh, Dr. Samer needs a faculty connection code, not a DreamSpark, because DreamSpark is dedicated for students. 
Yeah. So this uh, so faculty connection code can be uh, requested directly from uh, from us if uh, Dr. Thamer can send email to me. I will forward or to Kimberly. We can uh, just uh, send an invitation directly. We also, uh, if you, I'm not sure, Ruben, who is uh, on your side dealing with. We can also give you codes. Uh, so you can. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So yeah, whatever is working for you, let us know. We can give you some codes, and if, when you know faculty, you can send them directly invitation. Okay, so for those who are asking, there are DreamSpark, it's about software products. So if you want to install um, Visual Studio, or you want to install uh, some software that is uh, available for, like Microsoft Projects that you available for sale, this is what the program about. You also can install this in the labs. <coughs> Faculty Connection is about s uh, curriculum resources and training, and an invitation only needed for materials that for faculty only, because they <coughs> have um, answers to questions, or some tutorials that for faculty, we don't want to student have them. This is the only difference, okay? Hmm. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I will have to go. Any questions to me? I will have to leave in a couple of minutes. So if anyone you want specifically for me, let me know. Otherwise, I'm really uh, happy to have you all. And uh, let us know. We look forward to continue working with you. Thank you, Arkady, and thank you, Kimberly, for dedicating your time and effort and knowledge uh, to benefit uh, our faculties in uh, this uh, region. Uh, this is the first time, but not the last one, <laughs> of course. And uh, thanks to everyone uh, from our faculties uh, that attended and joined us today. Thank you very much, guys. Anything you need? Uh, you can con connect me directly or Arkady and Kimberly as I studied earlier. Thanks yes, a lot. Yes, yes, please do. Thank you guys and uh, I have to go but uh, please continue. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Thank bye, you. bye. Thank you, Robert, for organizing. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.